and Yassi. We're so honored to get to speak with you. And you know, I have loved your work since I was following you. And this is the life. Yeah. And I might sound nice. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just so happy to have you. Oh, thank, thank, you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So just to start, can you just tell us a little more about Middle of Nowhere and the extensive research that you went through? Um, when you were developing it? Yeah, absolutely. Talk to over 100 women, mm -hmm. um, mothers, sisters, daughters, wives, girlfriends. I thought it was important to really get the full spectrum of relationships. Some are more maternal, some are more romantic, some are um, sibling relationships, and really try to drill down to what these women have in common, which mm -hmm. is loss and separation and how um, that is endured and what that does to um, their own chemistry, to their own DNA mm -hmm. when you're waiting and longing and kind of putting your life on hold in a lot of instances. Um, also the financial hardships and the emotional hardships of it. And so really the challenge was to get that information out without it feeling like medicine. So I, I love love stories. Everybody loves a good black love story. So was always interested in kind of issues of abandonment and separation and how that affects love. And so put them together into a stew and it became middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And it's gotten so much attention. And I have to say congratulations on being the first African-American woman to win Best Director at Sundance. Okay. And I like that even with this honor, this distinction, you've always said that making films is not just about popularity or fame for you. So can you say what is it about and what do you want people to take away from your films? Yeah, for me, filmmaking is really about legacy. You know, I'm hoping to leave um, something here when I'm no longer here. And uh, I feel like films are very important in, you know, just uh, affecting the way we see ourselves and the way that we are seen by others. Mm -hmm. um, it's a rich legacy. It's a beautiful legacy. And so I think it's really important because I am also a film distributor. I have to remind myself not to just focus on opening weekend, okay. but really to remind myself that this is a film that is a piece of art, um, that is my expression, that is a story that I hope will last. And so, well, you know, I think the industry is really opening weekend, opening weekend, and those things are important, the business side of filmmaking. Right. I mean, you know, I, I unfortunately know that better than anyone, just being a distributor of black independent film. But then also, you know, films like Restless City, films like Kenya Wanda, these films need to have a life beyond the first weekend. Right. And so for me, that's really what the filmmaking is about, um, something that'll last. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And can you share one of your favorite memories from behind the scenes of Oh my goodness, we had lots of fun. <laughs> you know, it was just a really beautiful set. You know, we had Bradford Young, who's a Howard alumni uh, in the D.C. area, and and Hans Charles. And we had a lot of Howard grads and mm -hmm. just a lot of, um, you know, department heads of all stripes, but predominantly black. Um, you know, our cast, Omari, had been a friend that I'd worked with on I Will Follow. Uh, David, you know, such a gentleman, a really wonderful guy who's from Britain and really enjoyed like shooting on the streets of South Central like he was like, oh. <laughs> like okay really got into it you know uh, Lorraine and Edwina all of us uh, sharing all of our supporting cast but you know really for me you know beyond Paul Garns our producer and Hannah Parrish and Spencer and Tulane and all of the people on the crew that made it happen you know it really all centered around Ruby our lead character and Emiatsi and when you get into a film that is so focused on one person which this film yeah. is it really can be a torturous, ugly process if that person who's the lead actor isn't kind. Yeah. Doesn't have a kind heart, it doesn't have a generous spirit. You know, it was really important in the casting process that we found someone who was, you know, strong and vulnerable and had acting chops, but also was a good person. Mm -hmm. And so we were really lucky because we found that and everyone rallied around her and rallied around me and everyone wanted to work to make something beautiful. Personally, you you grabbed my attention from the moment the scene started. And so I just wanted to know, describe your process for discovering who Ruby was mm -hmm. as a woman. Um, my process for discovering who she was was um, outside of what Ava had already written, was just doing my own research on you know women that I knew that had gone through this experience, and I knew of two women, um, and so I went back and spoke to them. Um, and just to get their insight, their perspective on it. And then I coupled that with my own experiences of not having someone who was incarcerated, but my own feelings of loss, um, whether it be from a loved one or through a relationship. Um, and took all of that and kind of made it into uh, Ruby as I saw her and from what was already written. So, what, how big of a role was collaboration in the film? Mm. How did you use collaboration? 
it was it was huge. It was huge. I mean, that was one of the beautiful things of you know being able to work with Ava was that she was so giving. You know, she was is is a director. You know, with a vision, with a goal, with a plan. Um, and she's had this project for years. You know, so she has a very clear point of view of how she sees it. Um, she was very open. You know, to my idea, to our ideas. You know, all of us. Um, you know, and what we saw, and she was open to listening to those thoughts and perspectives, and so it made a difference. You know, it made you feel like we were in this together. It's not just about me. It's not just about her. You know, and ultimately, it, it is her vision. Everything that ends up on the screen is her. Mm -hmm. um, but she allowed all of us to have input on that, and that's the fun part about acting. You have your ideas, you take everyone else's ideas, you mix them up into this big pot, and then something wonderful comes out. Through these experiences, what did you learn about yourself? You know, one of the things I really enjoy about acting also is that you get to, I believe all of us have within us the, the capacity to, you know, to kill someone, to, you know, love someone, to you just all these different things within us. And to be an actor, you get to exhaust that and play with that and see how it feels. And so in this particular case, for me, I learned from Ruby um, that I could really, really use much more patience, you know. Um, I learned that... Uh, as far as this whole this issue, you know, of her dealing with her husband who was in prison, um, sometimes I believe we as people we sometimes want to judge someone in their situation. You know, why is someone staying? You know, why is she staying with that man? All of that, um, and so it opened up my eyes to just the reasons and how people get into these kind of situations and how it's no different from anything else. And so it um, it caused me to just be much more aware and. Um, and really, really, and truly patient because this is a patient woman and um, I could use more of that. <laughs> so we like to ask, what does Living Unchained mean to you? And I can start with you, Ava. Oh my gosh, well I think it's <laughs> such a great uh, name, mm -hmm. uh, moniker, mantra. Um, you know, it really I think is about having a fearlessness when you walk out of the door every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many things that um, inhibit us from being our true selves. Um, expectations, right. um, you know, what people say we cannot do. Mm -hmm. um, most of it's in our own head. And so the idea that we can live unchained by all of the outside trappings, you know, mm -hmm. um, is radical. It's hard. Right. And, you know, we, we should back, pat ourselves on the back if you can do it even for one hour, let alone a day, let alone live your life that way. So I think it's definitely something to aspire to. It's an aspirational name, yeah. but really mm -hmm. powerful. Yeah, Thank you. very cool. Uh, living Unchained to me, I would say, just means being free to be yourself. You know, forget the expectations that everyone has of you and that you have for yourself, especially in this business. You know, people try to put limits on you. You can't do this. You're too dark. You're too light. You're too short. You're too tall. Your hair is too, you know, all of that. Um, so for me, Living Unchained means being just who I am, putting it out there, and you take me as I am or don't, and that's okay. And I think also just because of our legacy as black women, um, the idea of living unchained is living um, in a way that our ancestors were unable to live. And so, um, you know, it comes with some responsibility as well, right? Because right. that was their dream for us. So, um, yeah, we should do it. Right. Are you doing it? I am doing it. And are you That's doing it? In my organization, yes. Good. <laughs> it's like you said, it's a journey, it's a process. Yeah. And it's definitely um, not for the faint at heart. No. <laughs> because there are a lot of people that want to put you in boxes. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So we're happy that we have these two women, these four women. Four yeah. of us. boxes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And we end all of our interviews with a little quick, fun game that you've all faced for. Damn, true oh, oh, oh. <laughs> So Ava, okay, these are your truth or dare. Oh and let God. me tell you that <laughs> the catch is, just, just to put you at ease, okay. whatever truth you choose or dare you choose, we will do it with you. So you know okay. that it's not trying to set you up or anything. Okay. Yeah. If you so choose, we can do it with you. So okay. Ava, we can start with you. You can pick truth or dare. Oh. Mm. I get you. She, she chose dare. dare. All right, you can open it up. Oh. And read it for In the spirit. Oh my god! <laughs> you read it? I love it. What if we all like create a pile of clone mm. around Little Nowhere? So maybe you can start one line, then I'll pick it up, then we can go around. Well, you start one line. Alright, okay. And then she goes, and she goes, and I'll go last. Oh my. Right. Okay, alright. Alright. Middle of nowhere, trying to get there. 
doing it all day, trying to stay aware. Struggles are hard, life is unfair. Mm -hmm. But we can do it together if we care. Oh, oh that was beautiful! <laughs> what advice would you give your younger actress self? Hmm. What advice would I give my younger actress self? I would say, Emiyatsi, be fearless, trust your gift, keep God first, and don't be afraid to do it all. Act, write, direct, try it all. Yeah. Thank you both for being here. And thank you for being your full self. I appreciate it. Thank you for hanging in there with the, the, the freestyle improvisation. Yeah. Whoa. That's beautiful. That was rough. She was with me. She was like, are we really about to? Right. Yes. We worked it out. Yes. No. Yeah, but you want to see what your truth was? Yeah. You can still answer the truth if you so choose. They were going to get me either way. Yeah, we were. We were going to get you. What's one of the me to rhyme. Oh, What's is. one verse you are really proud of as an MC? Wow. First of all, you're putting my MC status on blast. <laughs> I'm a filmmaker now. I did my research. But yes, uh, it was a good time in my life and thanks for reminding me. <laughs> yes, Don't forget to sign up for the Live and Chain newsletter because we will be raffling off tickets to see Middle of Nowhere on opening night, October 12th. And really quickly, could you tell us why it's so important to see a film that you want to stay in the studio on opening day? Important to go opening day and the second day. Mm -hmm. By Sunday, they've already made their decision as to um, what's going to stay in the theater for the following week and what's not. Really crucial for black films or any film that's not mainstream, studio driven, right. to see it on the first day. That doesn't necessarily mean the first night. There's 11 p.m., 11 a.m. Right. shows, 2 p.m. shows, 5 p.m. midnight shows, Saturday matinee. It's the Friday and the Saturday. We live and die by that. So please help us live. Help us live unchained. I bring it back around. I bring it back around. It's my MC. The MC in me. All I'm saying. So, um, so yeah. I hope uh, people give us some support and join us on Facebook and on Twitter. I'm A V A E T C on Twitter. She's M A T C. One word like Madonna, like Cher. Just M A T C. And uh, so we can all keep in touch. Yes, and we will definitely be blowing it up on cool. Twitter. Cool. Cool. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.